Okay, we're going to be looking at acids and alkalis. Scientists like to, well, actually everyone, people like to classify things and group them. Uh, it just makes it easier to sort things. So, I mean, we could do like big and little things, separating things into different colors if you're a designer, um, separating different living things into categories, different organisms, into animals and plants and everything like that. And for chemicals and a lot of the substances that exist around us, one way for us to separate things is into a category called acids and alkalis. And this allows us to make predictions about a lot of the things that are around. And actually, if you just look around the house, you'll realize there are a lot of things that can fit into these categories. And then we'll go into how we can actually test to see uh, if a substance is actually an acid or an alkali. We'll be doing a lot of experiments related to this in class. So here's a picture of a guy sucking on a lemon and he's making that face that I always make. I've been making since I was a kid. Every time I taste something sour, you get that, you know, somebody gives you some candy, says it's really good. Then you put it in your mouth and it's the most sour thing in the world. Uh, anything that is sour typically contains acid. So vinegar over here, we've got lemons that includes other citrus fruits, including oranges and limes and things like that. Um, soda often contains some acid. Uh, Coca-Cola contains a type of acid. That's why it's not so good for your teeth. You've all seen the experiment or you tried it before where you take one of your teeth that's fallen out, you leave it in Coke for a long time, try it out and see what actually happens. Some other drinks right here for adults' wine. Uh, acidity actually affects the flavor. People who are really into uh, drinking particular types of things will comment on its acidity. They're basically talking about its sourness and how it contributes to the flavor. Alkalis, different kinds of alkalis. Now, all of these things above are things that people actually uh, eat, okay? But there are a lot of acids that you cannot eat, which will definitely harm you. We'll talk about that later. Alkalis are the other category. Uh, toothpaste, drain cleaner. Obviously, you don't want to be eating all this stuff, right? But, uh, I mean, we do put this in your mouth, though. Bleach. Uh, soaps often contain baking soda, often contain these alkalis and... Uh, one kind of characteristic of alkalis is if you actually do taste them, which you shouldn't be tasting them, but they tend to be bitter. And they also tend to be, uh, they have a, a slippery component. Things feel slippery if they're alkalized. Now, in class or anytime you're handling anything, any kind of material, household cleaner, if you take a look at the back, you can usually see various types of warning labels. They don't all have to look like this, but these are some that exist, basically. Um, a lot of these things are irritants, so they can be, you know, you don't want to get them in your eyes, you don't want them on your on your hands for too long. There's a word called corrosive or corrosion, which basically means it can actually damage materials. We're going to be talking about acid rain later, and actually the acid that we have in our stomach called stomach acid. Uh, industrial chemicals, industrial acids, like some of the ones that we'll be actually using in our experiments in class, are definitely not safe to drink and we have to use all kinds of precautions like wearing gloves, lab coats, safety goggles when we're handling them. So just make sure to be careful with a lot of the stuff that we see harmful. Obviously, a lot of these things are harmful. Um, a few other kind of well-known types of acids and alkalis that will be used. Uh, you can probably guess for this one already, we're talking about dishwashing material. Fertilizer actually contains acids and alkalis, so does the material used to make dynamite, and this is supposed to be a car battery over here, and this is a stomach. So if you match all these up, these are all pretty big words that you've probably never seen before, but you should be able to now recognize where some of these things are used all around us. So nitric acid is actually used in the production of TNT. Ammonia is found in fertilizer. We're going to be seeing that a little bit later. Hydrochloric acid, sorry that's covered up, hydrochloric acid, maybe back up a little bit, is the acid that's found in our stomach and it helps to kill bacteria. Sodium hydroxide is a common alkali that is found in dishwashing detergents and then sulfuric acid is a common acid that's found in car batteries and things like that. So you've, also, you've often heard about you know, if you have old batteries that are leaking, not to touch them because a lot of the times acid is leaking out and it could have other kinds of problems as well too, but one is that it could actually uh, burn your skin without you realizing. So let's see, one more quick thing to look at. Oh, let's look at two more things. This is pretty cool. We can actually tell the difference between different acids and alkalis by 
using various types of indicators. And we're going to play around with this in class. But this is the most famous one, the universal indicator in the pH scale. There's basically a liquid which can be used as a liquid or it can be soaked in filter paper and we basically pull it out like strips of paper that contain various chemicals that will react differently based on if they come into contact with acids or alkalis. And it turns out that if you dip a little bit of that paper into something that's acidic, acidic towards this end, then you tend to get red and orange colors. If you dip it into an unknown liquid and it turns out to be blue or purple, that tells you that it's going to be strongly alkaline. And there is something that's right in the middle, and that's called neutral. So the scale usually goes from 0 to 14, and 7 right in the middle is neutral. So pure water is actually neutral. So if you're drinking bottled water and you test it out, it's often going to be around this pH 7 range. Our saliva is in this range as well too. Um, we talked about before if the stomach acid is actually the stomach contents actually contain acid. If we were to actually test out our stomach acid, we would find our stomach acid is pretty strong. We're going to talk more about that later. Okay, and so what you can do with all those household substances is you can actually test it with this pH paper and then find out if that substance is actually uh, acidic or alkaline. You can use it in liquid form as well too. So you see this teacher here has created a, a test tube, a measuring cylinder filled with different substances that's probably spreading out and it's causing various pHs to show up. Okay, we call this uh, the pH scale as well too, and we're gonna be learning more about that uh, in class. So we call this material, uh, the stuff that's here, this is either universal indicator paper or universal indicator solution, and we call the scale running from zero to 14, the pH scale, okay? One more way to figure out if uh, something is acid or alkali is by using something called uh, litmus paper. And so we're going to take a look at litmus paper. So there's a such thing as red litmus paper and blue litmus paper. And this is a little bit confusing, but it seems after you see this, you might be thinking, why not just use that universal indicator paper? It's more beautiful because it looks like a rainbow anyways. But you have red litmus paper and you have blue litmus paper. If you have red litmus paper and you put a drop of something and the color actually turns to blue, then that tells you that you've dropped some alkali there. Okay, this word says base. Base is another word for alkali. If you have blue litmus paper and you put a drop of something here and it turns red, that means you just put a drop of acid right there. So if you have red litmus paper, now think about this. If I have red litmus paper and I put a drop of something and it doesn't change color, it means you don't have an alkali. So it could be an acid or it could be something that's neutral. So watch out for that as well too. Okay, if I have blue litmus paper and I put a drop of something and it doesn't change color, it just looks like it gets wet, then that means we're probably talking about water that we just placed there, or it could just be a drop of alkali by itself. So one drop on one of these pieces of paper doesn't tell you exactly what the substance is, but if you have both of them available to you, you can test the same substance on both, you can figure out if it's an acid or an alkali. Those are two ways that we detect substances to find out if they're acids or alkalis to help us categorize them and learn more about their properties. You can also do this with purple cabbage, oh it's called red cabbage, with red cabbage you can also use flower petals to do this so we're going to be playing around with some of that in class.